The Affordable Care Act ACA, of 2010 really widened the number of insured Americans. Even with the expansion of insurance coverage in America, a lot of people cannot afford the high out-of-pocket expenses and deductibles attached to most insurance plans. In 2020, one in four Americans reported having unpaid medical bills, with the resultant medical debt being approximately $140 billion. The $140 billion figure for medical debt is often termed as an estimate since not all medical debt has already gone into collections, with some patients having arrangement plans with their healthcare providers. According to 2017 census data from the Survey of Income and Program Participants, the most current available data, 19% of households had medical debt. However, nearly 28% of black households and just under 22% of Latina families had medical debt in comparison to 17% of white families. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic did not help with a lot of people experiencing cuts in their working hours and struggling with other expenses. Even with COVID-related exemptions by the federal government, a lot of facilities still held on to their aggressive approaches to billing and collecting medical debt from patients, initiating litigation processes, garnishing wages, and putting liens on patients' properties. Part of understanding the medical debt problem requires exploring some of these drivers of medical debt. Difficulties in estimating how much a healthcare procedure or interaction with a healthcare provider would cost raise the risk of medical debt. Price variations based on negotiation rates between providers and insurers imply that differences are not exactly tied to the cost of providing certain services. Cost variations for similar services are based on what is covered by insurance and which provider the patient visits. Big healthcare systems negotiating with small insurers gets the best rates possible. Some sources suggest that a single insurer can have a half dozen different prices within the same facility, based on which plan was chosen at open enrollment, and whether it was bought as an individual or through work. In the context of non-emergency services, patients have the luxury of shopping around for cheaper facilities, and subsequently seek affordable care. In the case of emergency situations, patients are unable to shop for the best prices since timing is key in a matter of life and death. Providers, and related associations, argue that disclosing care prices up front often deters patients from seeking the care they need or tie providers to providing specific services that will be reimbursed. Healthcare facilities are also hesitant to communicate the prices of their services as they would be revealing whether they're providing the best rates possible, which makes more sense than actually pretending to care about the patient's well-being. While providers could be in network, some of the professionals involved in care could be outsourced to out-of-network facilities or providers without the patient's knowledge, thereby leading to surprise bills. The surprise bills from out-of-network providers that the patient is unaware of is the basis of the No Surprises Act, which seeks to provide additional protections to patients receiving out-of-network treatment. The Act requires patients to pay the in-network cost-sharing amounts of emergency services when they unknowingly receive non-emergency care from an out-of-network provider in an in-network facility. The complexities associated with providing care makes it difficult for healthcare professionals to estimate the cost of care, thereby forcing the patient to carry the heavy burden of doing their own calculations, and advocate for themselves in the case of billing errors, which worsen the medical debt problem.